So what were you saying about uh, you took flying lessons? Oh, the flying lessons were right after I got out of service. They were free, GI Bill of Rights. And to get a license, you had to have 50 hours. And after your instructions, and eight hours of flying, this was in Gladwin. And my friend had talked me into it, he took me over and introduced me to the instructor. He'd already got 40-some hours, and they had two planes. One was a 65 horsepower and an 85 horsepower. And the 85 horsepower, you could do loops and all kinds of stuff, I guess. So instructor took me up and did loops and all kinds of goodies. And came back down, he said, you want to sign up for it? And I says, yes. The next day, all the people from Gladwin came to work. He says, PJ, which was uh, my friend's name, won't be here. said he killed himself in that airplane last night. Oh. So I was at Paul Bear at the funeral. His mother was there. Couldn't see his closed casket. He was flying over a lake off of the Tippewas River and probably doing stunts in front of this girl's cottage and plane just went down killing. So I'm already signed up. So I go back and after eight hours he says, the next time you come over you're going to solo. That's the last flying lesson I took. They called me, come on back, and I never did, but I'm still <laughs> alive. <coughs> You're fit, fit, fit. I'm fit, fit, fit. <laughs> yeah, the kids always loved that fit, fit, fit story. <coughs> that was one of their favorite because I think they were amazed that he could remember all these fit, fits and keep them in the right place. Uh -huh. <coughs> and another thing that we really enjoyed was back in that day, uh, Sears had catalogs. All the big retailers had the catalogs, and your, Joe was just so keen about being able to make up stories. So they'd sit down with the catalog, and the kids would turn a page, and then he'd have to tell a story about what was on the page. Mm. And he always came up with a story about whatever it was that was on the page. So then they'd turn another page and he'd have another story. And that was one of their favorite, favorite things that he would do, telling stories out of the catalogs. He'd make them interesting, too. Well, it got hard at times on the catalog stories. You know, for instance, they didn't use models for the underwear or anything, and I remember one story that went from a refrigerator to the brassiere. I didn't want to get into details about that, and so I said, well, that's something you put your cantaloupes in the refrigerator to hold them from rolling around. <laughs> Sounds logical. <laughs> and they did. They, they held the cattle up real good. <laughs> I don't know. Well, when she started courting with you, riding that motorcycle, she wasn't a bit afraid of that. That was fun. So she had uh, probably got that from her dad. That get up and go to do things. Kind of scary ones. Well, we started dating. It was a she was afraid canoe of bugs trip. when she was little. She was afraid of bugs. I thought she liked bugs. No. <laughs> she liked the snakes. I know that. She loved the snakes, I think. <laughs> yeah, she'd wrap them around her bicycle handlebars. And when she'd find them, come home with them. But the bugs, she didn't like bugs then. I was so surprised when she came home with one in her hand. She was showing it to me. It was a big beetle type. <clears throat> and knowing how she just 
didn't like him at all. And her daddy at that time worked at the gas station on the corner while he was laid off. And so she jumped on her bike with the bug and pedaled over there and went in and said, look what I got, Dad. And it was this beetle bug. And then she promptly hand over and she stopped. <laughs> 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 that was the funniest thing. He came home to tell about it. Well, she, but I was amazed that she would even, you know, touch a bug. But she, she, she told it. I guess she didn't like it. She stopped it, but she wanted Daddy to see that she <laughs> really went around.